In my previous video about Lemon Bar, I talked about a concept known as a Lemon Bar Manager, which basically takes the configuration step of Lemon Bar. So that's the step where you set things like the modules, the colors, the fonts, and all of the stuff that really makes your Lemon Bar your Lemon Bar, and basically wraps that up in a way that makes it so it's easier to do things like partial updates, IPC, and all of the stuff that you really need to do to make it so Lemon Bar is actually functional with more than maybe two or three modules. So this is going to let us do partial updates, and it seems to do it fairly well. So today we're going to be looking at a lemon bar manager by the name of Suckade. So over on my main screen here, let's see what we actually have. So up in the left corner here, I know the font is really small. This is actually one of the problems with it. I'll talk about that in just a bit. So for now, I'll just explain what's actually going on. So on the left side here, I basically have all my workspaces and any of the ones that are colored red, that means there's actually something on that workspace. So if I go to workspace two, as you can see, there's nothing here. Go to workspace one, we have this terminal right here. And if I go and actually make something here, that updates basically instantaneously. Over on the right hand side here, what we have is my time and date module, which is being updated every single second. And as you can see, it's not actually freezing up the bar. I can just go ahead and do stuff normally like I would with any other bar. And even though it's updating every single second, it's not actually freezing it. So it seems like the partial updates actually are working properly. And then to the left of that, I have my weather module. Then I have my pulse audio volume level, my system memory usage, my CPU temperature, my CPU usage, my current downloaded packages, my torrents module, and also my crypto module. Now there are a few modules missing from this, but most of them are here and there's enough here to actually demonstrate what this can actually do. And like with my polybar, if I go and click on one of these modules, they actually do have some action handlers set up. So for example, if I click on the CPU usage, that should open up HTOP. As you can see, that goes ahead and does that. If we click on the weather module, that opens up W3M and searches for WTTR.IN. I'm not going to click the time and date because that will open up my emails. But if I click on the, I don't know, the crypto module, that will take us to coin market cap. So all of those seem to work just fine. Now the way that you go and configure this, if you're coming from using Polybar, is very, very familiar. In fact, it's the exact same file type. So like with Polybar, it's also using an INI file. So it'll be located in your .config folder, in the Suckade folder, in the Suckade RC file. As you can see, it's very, very similar to what you saw when you're using Polybar. So if you want to actually set out the blocks you want to use, basically what you do is if you want to have things left aligned, you put them just right at the start. Then anything to the right of the first pipe will be center aligned. And then anything right of the second pipe will be right aligned. And I don't actually have any center aligned modules. But if I go and say, take these two modules right here and I put them in here, as you will see, quit out of this, relaunch that. Now, right up here, we actually have the two modules in the center. So that's pretty easy to change around those locations. Now, as for creating a new block, it's actually really, really straightforward. So pretty much what you need to have for every single block is obviously the title of the block, and that is in square brackets. So this is saying, okay, we're going to be working on the desktop block right now. And then what you need is a command and command is basically going to be the command that is actually being run to generate the output for this module. And then what you need is either a trigger or an interval. Now, I don't know why I had this update here. This shouldn't be here. That actually isn't a thing that exists at all. So you need a trigger or an interval. So an interval is basically a time loop that you want to update on. So for example, we've got my, uh, what's one down here? the CPU one. So CPU is on a 10 second update loop. So every 10 seconds, it's going to rerun the lemon CPU command. Now what trigger is going to do is a little bit different. So trigger, it's not exactly IPC. The way it works is basically it's going to attach to an infinite loop. And every single time that loop outputs something, it's going to actually update the command. So you could actually have some IPC method behind this, but it doesn't care about that. All it cares about is it's attached to some sort of loop that keeps outputting some sort of output. Now, most of the formatting you're going to want to do can actually be done inside of Suckade. So if we go look at the documentation on the GitHub, as you can see, you can set things like the foreground color, the background color, the label foreground, the label background, the affix foreground, affix background, the line color, overline, pretty much everything that you could want to set can be set through variables inside of 
each of these blocks. But if you want to do some, say, custom formatting, so like I'm doing up here where you can't exactly specify, okay, well, when I'm selected on the second one, I want the background to be this color. And when there's something actually on that workspace, I want the foreground color to be this color. You can't really do that by just setting the variables. So if you want to go and actually do the formatting inside of the regular sort of lemon bar formatting style, all you have to do is set the variable raw to true. If you have this to false, basically what it's going to do is escape every single time you type in a percent sign. So if we just go and rerun Suckade now, as you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but every time I've got a percent sign in here, it's going to escape it, which obviously isn't really the output I want to see. So in this case, I do have to actually go set the raw value to being true. Now, if you want to have some modules that basically just act as buttons. So for example, I have my crypto module up here and my torrent module. If you want to have some modules that act like that, then what you can do is just not include an interval value. And basically what that means is the module is never going to be updated. Now, I'd recommend doing that over setting like a really big update time because what I've noticed is if you set a really big update time, sometimes the module just doesn't appear. So I think this leads us into a very good point. I think that Suckade is a really good tool if you just want a very, very basic status bar. But it has some serious problems and one of those is with the action handlers. Now I don't know if this is specifically a problem with Suckade or with Lemon Bar, but I never experienced this problem when I was just using regular Lemon Bar. So I'm going to assume that it has to be related to Suckade. Now, what I mean is this right here. So if I go and actually scroll on this module, so this is my volume module. When I scroll up, it raises the volume level. If I scroll down, it will lower the volume level. Now, if I scroll up, give it a second, scroll down. Now the bar has frozen. I don't know why it's frozen. Yeah, I know how I have these polybar messages here, but if I get rid of the polybar updates, the problem still exists. It'll let me update a couple of times and then it just breaks. And I don't know if this is a problem with the way that Suckade is working or what's happening here, but this seems to happen pretty frequently. And then if I actually try to quit out of it, it doesn't actually cancel the application in a timely manner. So I have to quit out of the terminal, restart it again like that. And there's a couple of the instances where that happens as well. So for example, sometimes when I open up the torrent module, that will cause it to freeze as well. So if we try this again, is it going to freeze this time or are we good this time? Okay, it seems like we're good this time. Okay, no, there we go. As soon as I closed out the notifications, now I can't actually bring any more open. If I go to a different desktop, as you can see, the bar has frozen. So I don't know if this is specifically a problem with Lemon Bar or with Suckade, but... As I said before, I haven't seen this problem happen when I'm just using regular lemon bar. So I'm going to assume it has to be related to Suckade. But this isn't really a problem if you don't use action handlers in your status bar. If you don't use action handlers, well, this isn't really a problem for you. So if we just quit out of this again, bring that back open, and there we go. So now we are back. So there's a couple of other weird things that may be considered problems, but also may not be. So one thing is you can't actually include any pipes in your command. So for example, if we did something like pipe lemon packages into sort. So this shouldn't actually do anything because there's just one line here and the result of sorting one line is obviously going to be the exact same line. So if I just relaunch Suckade, what you're going to notice is that module just doesn't exist anymore. So we'll try that again, relaunch it, try it again, relaunch it it doesn't seem to be appearing. So for whatever reason, having a pipe in there doesn't seem to actually work. So if we just get rid of that now and then restart the lemon bar again, you're going to see that the module is back. Now it seems like the fix that I talked about earlier for the modules not appearing, so the crypto module and the torrent module, isn't actually as much of a fix as I thought it was. So in here, I've got the interval missing and the modules are still not appearing. So I'm not sure what's happening here. The only thing that I'm actually running in here is echo C. So I can't see how that would cause a problem. So in some runs of the application, it does appear. So for example, right now, the torrents module is appearing. The torrents module is appearing again, and now it's gone again. So I don't know what the deal is with that. I haven't seen any of the other modules disappear like that. And for this one, 
I'm literally just running the command echo. It can't get any simpler for doing some basic output. Maybe it's a problem with echo. Maybe it'd be better if I just did print F instead. So we'll try that now and see if it appears. So print F. We'll see if that actually fixes it. Okay, it's appearing this time. It's not appearing this time. So once again, I don't know what the problem is with that. Maybe if I put these into a script, it seems like everything that's running inside of a script always appears. So maybe there's a problem with running a command that I need to pass in an argument to. But I haven't seen that be a problem in other instances, so I don't know what's happening in this particular one. The next thing is a bit less of an actual problem and just a weird thing to include. So you don't actually have to fork any of your applications into the background. In fact, if you try to fork them into the background, sometimes it just breaks everything. So this time the crypto module is going to fork stuff into the background. We click on this and now it doesn't work. And yeah, we can click on this as much as we want. If we want to move around, yet yeah, it's actually frozen the bar. So for whatever reason, forking stuff into the background will just freeze the bar. Once again, I'm not really sure why it's doing that. I presume that actually does have to do with the way Suckade is written though, because if you were just normally writing lemon bar, you would have to fork stuff into the background to make sure you don't actually freeze the bar. So I think that's just a weird way that this application is actually being written. Now, another thing I want to talk about is the triggers. So the trigger functionality is actually really cool because it doesn't lock you into a specific way of actually updating the loops when you tell them to update. However, it has a pretty glaring flaw. So as you can see, I'm not actually showing what window I'm currently focused on like I would be doing over in Polybar. And there's a very good reason for that. So this module right here would actually do that. So as you can see, it's going to be running XDO tool, get window focus, get window name. And if we just run that command in my terminal, basically what that's going to do is just print out the name of the window that I'm currently focused on. In this case, that is going to be Alacrity. And the trigger for that, I've just got set to BSP subscribe. So every single time there's a BSPWM event, it's just going to re-update the module. And there are quicker ways to do it, but that is good enough. So what's going to happen if we add this module into the bar? So we add the window module in here. And let's go back over here. I'll zoom in just so you can see the problem. If we kill this now, restart, bar has frozen. I thought it was going to actually show something on the actual output here but the bar has actually frozen. And this isn't just because I'm using the same trigger in two places. I've got another trigger I had set up for the volume. So I'll just go and test that one out now. So volume right here is pulse update. So pulse update, basically what that's gonna do, every single time I press my volume update key, put some output into that loop. So you'd think that that would make it so I could then just have that part of my bar update every single time I update my volume, because right now it's actually on a one second timer, and that's not really a sensible way to do your volume. So if we just restart Suckade, and we try to change my volume, it's frozen already, because you can't actually have two triggers at one time. I don't know why you can't have two triggers at one time, that seems like a really big glaring oversight, even if we actually go and delete this module, so just in case it's not trying to rerun that same module, even though we don't have it in the bar, so it shouldn't actually be running. But if we just rerun this now, as you can see, the bar has frozen because we have two triggers. Now, I don't know why that happens, but it seems to happen every single time I try to use the trigger option, which really annoys me. So if you just want everything to be on timed updates, you still might find a reason to use this. But if you need those trigger updates, then you're going to have to look in some other place. Now, another thing is this font right here. So you might notice that I'm running a very different font to what I normally run, and the font is also very small. And that is because this application doesn't actually support TTF fonts. I don't know why the developer decided to ignore doing those, but for whatever reason, TTF fonts aren't actually supported. Now you can actually go and change the font, but you probably don't have a font actually installed that is supported. So you can actually go and use um, bitmap fonts but you probably don't have any bitmap fonts installed because why would you have bitmap fonts installed? You can use TTF fonts instead. So when you actually want to set the font size, you actually have to specify the size of it. So that's a really weird thing to you know neglect including because most forks of Lemon Bar actually do have support for TTF fonts and I can't imagine it would be that difficult to actually support it. All you'd have to do is 
pass the name through to Lemon Bar. So I don't know why it's not being supported, but for whatever reason, they aren't supported by Suckades. So as this video goes on, I'm giving more caveats for why you may not want to use this tool, but there are still some people who might actually benefit from it. So if you're coming from, say, DWM, and you just want a super basic bar that has timed updates and is really easy to configure, then Suckade is still for you. But if you're coming from something like Polybar, then there might be some better options for you. So there's another one that exists called Lemon Blocks, which is sort of like i3 Blocks and DWM Blocks, and I will be taking a separate look at that one I did have a bit of a problem with it though, when I tried to install it, it seemed to segfault every single time. And another one that exists is called Captain. And I'm going to hope that both of those are actually better than this Lemon Bar Manager. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is how to actually get this installed, because there isn't actually an AUR package. So what you're going to have to do is get a package called INIH actually installed. But the problem is that on Arch Linux, there isn't actually a package for this. It seems to only exist within a Debian context. So what you're gonna have to do instead is when you go and download this application, it actually comes with a version of INIH. So what you have to do is just switch out the build file for that version, and then it will build that application alongside the Suckade application. So doing that will get it installed, and it's not too difficult. It basically shows you how to do it right here. Just follow exactly what it says here, and you'll get it installed with basically no difficulty. And from what I've seen, there isn't actually a man page. So if you want some documentation for this application, the GitHub is pretty much the only thing that you can come to. But luckily for you, all of it is pretty well explained. So for example, if you want to go set the command that is passed into Lemon Bar, what you do is you run the command option equals the command you want to send in. So for example, I'm actually running my command as Lemon Bar A15 because the default number of action handlers isn't enough. So I was just like, okay, I'll just set it up to 15 and that should cover everything I want to do. But there are some other options you can pass into Lemon Bar as well. So if you just look at your help page for Lemon Bar, you'll see what you can do with that. So you could, for example, pass in the dash F option if you have a font that is supported, but you can do that with a variable as well. Or you can set the bar geometry. Once again, though, that can also be set inside of Suckade. I think really the only thing you can't actually set inside of Suckade is the number of clickable areas. I don't know why you can't set that in it. It seems like a weird thing to neglect including, but if you want to go and actually change the default command that you're using to actually launch Lemon Bar, that's how you'd go about doing that. And as for the rest of them, they're all pretty straightforward how they work, and the descriptions on the right-hand side seem to do a pretty good job at explaining everything that you need to know about what you're trying to set. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to say in today's video, but before I go, I just want to thank my supporters. A special thank you to Joachim Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Monsters, Peter, the Road, Tony Donald, John Spine, and Zilva. If you want to support the channel, there'll be some links down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear in this channel, or anything else you want. And also, I've got my podcast, that is Tech of a Tea, available on Library and YouTube, as well as some other platforms down below as well. And also, if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to check this out over on platforms like Library, BitChute, and BitChute as well. Also, remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.